Now, a new COVID-19 model is painting a worrying picture of the country's readiness for the infection peak. Experts say 40,000 people could die, and there might be a critical shortage of ICU beds as well. The model was presented to Health Minister Zuelim Kize last night. Dr. Sheetal Salal, director of the Modeling and Simulation Hub Africa, was part of that presentation and joins me now via Skype from Cape Town. Doctor, thank you so much uh, for joining us now in that presentation last night. Uh, you said your projections show that there'll be 40,000 deaths by November with 475 expected deaths uh, by the end of May, which is this month. That is a massive jump in four months. How did you reach those uh, figures? Thank you for having me um, on this show. So the projections are a function of a number, a number of assumptions. Uh, on the one hand, we need to look at the assumptions or interventions that are to be expected in the next uh, four to six uh, months. Uh, so for, on that particular front, we've got, you know, we've just come out of a five week lockdown. We're currently in a level four uh, restrictions. Um, and what we have assumed in our model is that we are, uh, is that these projections will, these level four restrictions will continue for the next month following uh, which we would, we are assuming a set of social distancing uh, measures that are more relaxed than the current level four assumptions. Of course, as new interventions uh, may come into play or uh, different sets of restrictions may be implemented in the next uh, four to six months, this will change the, the course of the epidemic. Um, on the, um, uh, additionally, what we have to consider is that the epidemic itself, or COVID-19, is only four and a half months old globally. And we are trying to make long-term projections for the next six months. There is considerable uncertainty in these projections. So we cannot view a projection of, say, 40,000 deaths as a fact or as the most likely scenario. What we have taken into account is the understanding of COVID-19 globally and how our South African epidemic is progressing to date. We are still in the early stages of the epidemic. And as more data comes in, more local data on how the epidemic progresses, we will update our assumptions and can perhaps in, in the next week or two provide you with a different uh, set of projections. All right, now, Doc, uh, you're using the current data that you have available to you right now, obviously. Did you take into account the lag uh, when it comes in, in, in people getting the results once uh, they've gone for the test as well? And, and also talk to me about, uh, have you looked at our current recovery rate, which is uh, over 7,900? What does that tell you in, in, if, if it tells you something? Sure. So we have definitely taken into account um, a lag in uh, testing. So the time between uh, uh, getting uh, collecting a specimen and getting a lab uh, report, um, and that's taken into account in how we project our detected cases over time. But of course, detected cases are a function of testing and testing strategy, um, and that differs across the provinces, uh, and with also different uh, lags across the provinces. So. Uh, what we tend to rely on more are, are death data uh, as being uh, more reliably reported from the from the hospitals. Um, sorry, your second question was? Uh, I was I, I was speaking about the current uh, recovery rate uh, in South Africa at the present moment. Yeah. And also, uh, when you answer that, just speak to me about, uh, you're also saying that we we're going to have a, a massive, massive shortage when it comes to ICU beds as well. Sure. So on the uh, recovery uh, data side, remember that the, the recovered um, are a function of those who have already, who know their, 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 their status when it comes to having had a COVID infection. So they've had a positive diagnosis and then one is relying on them to, uh, go on people to, once they feel better, to, or, or pass, say, a 14-day window to get a test to, de to determine if recovery criteria are met. So there might be significant under-reporting of, um, of these cases. So rather, we look to the epidemic process or the underlying behavior of the disease to determine recovery in our models. Um, and then you mentioned the, uh, the ICU uh, bed and hospital bed uh, shortage. So perhaps this question is best uh, fielded by the National Department of Health. Uh, what we consider in our models is trying to estimate what that, what that total need may be or is likely to be given the assumptions that, uh, with which we built our model. Now, already there are measures in place that the Department of Health can elaborate on uh, to extend our capacity 
in in ICU and in hospitals. Um, and uh, and th and this is uh, you know the, the the country doing its best to get ready. At the same time, we need to take into account that along with uh, resources, there is uh, along with resources such as ventilators and beds, we also need to be mindful of stuff. And again, the Department of Health will be best. Uh, uh, in place to comment on the expansion measures. All right, thank you so much. Uh, that was uh, Dr. Sheetal Salal, a director of the Modeling and uh, Simulation Hub in Africa, explaining to us how they reached uh, some of the numbers they reached there, uh, saying that uh, about 40,000 people will be, uh, might die by November, and expecting 475 people to die from COVID 19 related illnesses by the end of this month as well.